Hello, Happy New Year and welcome back to this Canadian channel, I guess. My name is Rebecca and today I wanted to do something slightly different instead of the classic knitting podcast. So this is going to be a little bit of my knitting inspiration or knitting plants that won't drain my knitting module. This time of the year, I'm sure I'm not the only one that is having on their like, YouTube feed all of these videos popping about what I needed in 2023 or the best things that I've needed last year. But I've also seen something a little bit different with a trend where people have been really honest and candid about their hits but also their flops. People like Knit Knit or even the World of Work. So with all of this inspiration in mind, I didn't want to do like what I needed in 2023 because I don't have all with me right now. After a little bit of a long month with Give Knit, I've taken a look into my intentions and I've decided that whatever I plan is going to be flexible and also that I don't want to have any projects of my needles that will drain my energy or the little time that I will have to dedicate sometimes to knitting. First of all, my mood board, here it is. It's inspired by projects that are both easy to knit and easy to wear, but also by projects that will require a bit more of a play with colors or with texture. And that's why I try to kind of like replicate that in the board. Those are the trends that I want to focus on, mostly because my life has changed a little bit. The weather has changed dramatically, I'm no longer living in Scotland, and although the winters are cold, I definitely will use more like cardigans and v-necks in here. Secondly, I've got quite a lot of like leftovers or single skins, and I've had quite a lot of fun playing with colour this year, but also playing with like little things like ornaments, and I really want to keep my days off for maybe casting on a project that's just about having fun and exploring new things. My first category is called easy to knit and easy to wear. If you look at, again, the Instagram board, you're going to see different options that are actually, I think, quite popular that will reflect this trend. For me, it's all about versatility, mindless, easy knitting, and also polished pieces that I know I can wear over and over all the time. I've been focusing on cardigans on one end, and that's where you can see the countdown cardigan by Lily Kid makes over there. I also need to finish my champagne cardigan, if we all remember. And then we've got some drop shoulders with I focus on v-neck and a polished detail sometimes on the shoulders sometimes I play with color but it is all about oversized comfy and polished looks on the one hand like I mentioned is a countdown cardigan by Lily Kate makes and this is just a reflection of something that is a conclusion from 2023 and I'm sure I'm not the only needer to say this I need more cardigans so Lily's pattern, the countdown cardigan, perfectly fits the bill for easy to wear versatile cardigan. This cardigan is knitted in the K-weight and if I'm not wrong, she knitted it in Loch Lomond, which is a DK Scottish yarn that's actually really really lush but I don't have access to in here right now. The countdown cardigan has a saddle shoulder construction and is knitted in decay weight with 4 and 3.75 millimeter needles. And I think it's beautiful. If you have a v-neck with a double button band as well, and in the sample she wears it with quite a lot of ease, but I feel like you could easily modify it if you prefer to have it a bit more not fitted but with a bit less ease. I think it is a spectacular and it's definitely one of those projects that I've seen on my social media popping every now and then. I feel like everyone in my radar has been knitting one of this and I could love to make one of this in like a dark grey or even a black. I know they sound like boring colours but I just don't have those colours in my wardrobe right now and every time I try to pair one of my bottoms with something neutral I found that I don't have it. Other options that will make a great versatile piece are the Eva Cardigan by Petit Knit, which is also knitted in the K. It has a 2x2 bottom band and it's slightly longer. 
and I think it looks really nice. But also, I wanted to highlight the Leith Cardigan by Rebecca Claw. This cardigan is knitted bottom up, so it's slightly different from the other two, and it does have intarsia. But if I'm not wrong, Rebecca either has knitted one in a single color or talked about knitted one in a single color, and then you can almost like imitate the finish of the petite knit with the two by two bottom line and even needed a little bit longer. I have the least cardigan pattern and definitely will rather adapt the least cardigan to make it look like the Eva cardigan. Now the least cardigan is knitted in worsted weight yarn so that may complicate things a little bit more for me here trying to find the right yarn but I'm sure that mixing some of them I can achieve the gauge. And continuing in the worsted weight yarn if you wanted to knit something Top down, you could also go for the Coven Cardi by Shea Johnson. It's also knitted in worsted weight and it does feel to some ribbon detail. It's not a double knitting bottom band, but I think it's a great pattern, size inclusive, that allows you to put some stripes in a single color, do a little bit whatever you want in terms of playing maybe with life leftover worsted weight yarn that you may have flopping around. And the sample that she has in her rubber repage where she's got something like it looks almost like type of like beige color with like navy stripes looks really really lush it's knitted in five millimeter needles and 4.5 so that would be a very quick and really great cardigan to have going back to my inspiration board i said it before and i'll say it again i need more v-necks in my life above it all what i've noticed that i'm missing in my knitted garments are drop shoulders. I feel like last year so many designers have designed either with a shallow construction or with drop shoulders and though I love them I have not knitted one since the first ever sweat that I knitted. I've shown before that I've got already both the yarn and the swatch for it but I am going to be making sibling sweater my size by Laura Penrose. This is a stripy sweater I also feel like you can make it like in a single color and it would be absolutely fine. It's knitted top down, it's DK weight, and it has a very, very beautiful construction on the shoulder right before it joins the sleeve. That really is the highlight of the whole sweater. She has two samples in her rubber repage. One is a bit more fitted, which is the lilac one, and one is very oversized which is the black and white one. I think she wanted to show the versatility of it and how you can really play with ease. But I know that I'll probably stick with like the ease recommended in the pattern. And it's one that I really hope to have ready for spring because it will be ideal for like March type of weather in here. Another drop shoulder sweater that is actually in my needles and that I intend to knit is the Dartmoor v-neck sweater by Kate V. Everyone has been doing the Harlow v-neck sweater last year but I actually prefer the fit of the Darmor v-neck. I feel like it's the right amount of oversize for me without being way too big and it also has a drop shoulder detail and like an exposed seam in the back. I've been knitting mine in Manchelope but I've noticed that Manchelope don't have a lot of drape and also they will, I think someone told me that in spun yarn, builds a little bit more often when knitted on its own. So what I've done is purchase Didi Kaka, which is a strand of lace alpaca from Holst Garden in an incredibly close colour. And what I want to make is rip back what I've got so far, at this strand, swatch again, and hopefully I'll be fine and good to go. It's a bulky weight sweater, so it's definitely one that you can knit very, very fast. The gauge, I've got it right here at 5.5 millimeter needles and the gauge is 15 stitches and 24 rows. So that should really fly. Before all of that, I've been selected to test knit a sweater that is not yet released but will be soon, which is the Calm Down Sweater by Lily Kate Makes. That will be the sweater version of the cardigan. It's also knitted in DK and in the same needles and a similar gauge to the cardigan. I have no yarn selected for this yet because I want to swatch with some of the things I've got in the house, but I think that will be ideal. And I think it is going to be a hit this year, especially considering how popular has been the cardigan. 
so watch out for that one i also wanted to highlight another one of her sweaters that looks really nice but i don't own the pattern that is the slow down sweater that sweater is knitted in worsted weight instead of decay weight and if you touch the drop sleeve a more air detail going around the v-neck which is really really lovely especially when you see sample needed a mad hot pink and some balloon sleeves so that would be an option if you are in a climate where you actually need something a little bit warmer and i think it still looks really put together and really polished finally because i really love this designer i wanted to give a highlight to Tony Yu, who has recently released the henley sweater i think that's what it's called let me just check highline highline henley sweater by Tori Yu. And Tori is just a great designer she's always size inclusive and she always comes up with these really lovely designs that have a twist but they're still really good staples that are really fun to knit this sweater has the high uh, the henley neck which makes it a little bit different it also has a drop shoulder and if you touch stripes and i think it would be a really great idea if you have some dk yarn lying around but never enough for just a single sweater or never enough to make like the big stripes that for example i'm going to make in the sibling sweater my size so literally you could take like a color stripe and do something magical with it and it has a little bit of an oversized fit but not too much and I can tell you because I've needed some of her patterns, her writing style is impeccable and easy to follow. Now we're moving to the second category that I'm calling brave and playful. There's a tale that has been shared with many of my friends and this tale tells the story of a girl who's been hunting for the perfect v-neck cable sweater i know there's a lot of cable sweaters there but i want a cable sweater that is v-neck has simple cables is knitted top down or you know the classic drop shoulder back panel pick up join in the run and crack on and most importantly it's size inclusive i've been a little bit inspired by aka nora knit I think I'm not brave enough. She picked for her first testing experience a cable sweater and I picked well a texture sleepover actually but I, I've been so afraid of knitting cables and I've knitted the same cable hat that Jason has cast me her three times which is great. Both think it's time to be a little bit braver this year. This will be projects that Will probably be taken care of on my days off or when I'm on holidays or when I've got a little bit more of mental space and really focus on them and I can put time and energy into really enjoying the having to look at a pattern a couple of times or having to pick colors because if I'm really tired I just want an easy life and I'll go for things of the category number one. If you look at my inspiration board you will see that the girls wearing a round neck cable oversized sweater and I want a v-neck. I've not been able to find the perfect one as I've told you but I know Rebecca Crabea will probably be releasing soon a pattern that has both options. I know the knitbook girl has a crew neck one and a sleepover so I'll apply to test knit Crabea's v-neck sweater and if I don't get in still i'll buy the pattern and i would really like to buy the crew neck one from sophie the knitbook girl because if you've seen it in her instagram and i'll try to pop it around here i've just posted a picture it looked really good i've been chasing it in stories and a friend of mine i know she wants that sweater already and is already planning yarn for it i also wanted to be a little bit braver with texture and i wanted to share a couple of small accessory patterns with you because i found accessories are probably the comfort zone where I can get a little bit out, out of my comfort zone, if you can say that. First, one thing that I already have yarn for, my friend she gifted me, and it's called Pendulum. I want to knit the plumage socks by Annie Utinet. My friend Alina mentioned a few times she gifted me those socks and I really, really, really like them. The fit is spectacular. 
and I know she recommends them for more of an intermediate nature or adventures one and when I saw adventures I thought well, that's me so I have the pattern and I would really really love to make them they're toe up and they have this type of texture that from afar looks like four cable but they look really 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 good from one finished designer to another one and one that i don't ever hear people online or at least the people i watch podcasts from talk about it's the lanes of halards scarf that will probably need a little bit longer by jenny ansa or Cody Cotoli on instagram she's also finished and she has loads of really really lovely accessories with like intricate cables bubbles but they always look really good and they look really fun. This one is knitted in the K and it takes up to 700 meters. I'm pretty sure I have that quantity matched as of some decay. And if not, I'll buy it. I think the scarf looks really good. And it's not like any other cable scarf that I've seen on Insta or on my social media or on Ravelry. So I really would like to knit that one this year. On the other hand of texture, it's color it's both color work and it's maximizing my leftover yarn that's why i've put a couple of patterns on that mood board you can see that i've got the mini scout show by florence sperling i also have like everyone else online the sweet shop blanket from laura penrose and finally i've got the i don't know if i'm gonna pronounce it but like this really cute little almost like boxes for like trinkets called shrunken 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 by the petite knitter let's just start with the petite knitter because i've never seen anyone knitted this and after knitting all of those christmas ornaments that i'm going to continue to make this year i thought you know what for all the tiny teeny bits or even for gifts this is a great pattern it's so cute i don't see myself uh, knitting one of those animals that everyone's knitting but I really want to need more for my house and I think these little lens will be great to just store, I don't know, rings or just little things and items that I've got laying around the house or even in the bedside table. They'll need the finger weight hold double or you can also use the K and then it's in three millimeters which is not too small. So yeah, they're tiny quick things that really feel my creativity those christmas ornaments really really kick something on me with small items i don't know what it is but i found a lot of joy into playing with the possibilities of it and talking about the possibilities another pattern that yeah i'm, I'm going to make it's going to happen is the switch shop blanket and i was planning to make the biggest one the one that has like I think it's 99 squares, so it's probably gonna take me the whole year. And that's fine. At first, I wanted to make it kind of like with a cream color on the base, like the one featuring in Laura Penrose's page. I've got quite a mix of colors of DK and fingering weight, and I was not really sure how I would make how I could make it look if I was just using scraps or, or leftover. But I think talking about being brave and bold is kind of like letting go a bit about all of this planning. And yeah, I've decided with my friend Marta from Quarantine Knitter, we're going to do like a knit alone together. And we're going to be aiming to make two squares per week and probably have it by the end of the year. Some weeks I may need more, some weeks I may need less, but yeah, the background project almost like a temperature blanket type of thing is going to be the sweet soap blanket by Laura Penrose. For other patterns that I would recommend you for the house that you can do a new leftover from, of course I have to talk about Maxine hot water bottle cover and I do plan to make another one for my partner at some point but I've also created a bundle of like home items that I really want to create that have been my my inspiration home board for a while and i'll link it below if you want to know more about home items last but not least i wanted to experiment in color work a little bit more and i can talk to you about loads of sweaters that have been on my radar but the mini scout show by florence berlin is a pattern that i own and it's a pattern that i have yarn purchased from i actually got the yarn for this in summer i purchased a mini skein at every single shop and festival that i 
been to when I was in London with my friends and I want to knit it. It is a triangle shop that you can knit in a viewer version by the way, but I've decided that I wouldn't use the shawl, I would use more the scarf and you need it tip to tip. So you very similar to other scarves. You start with like little stitches, you get increase up to the half and then you do all the decreases. The pattern has schematics and it really helps you to choose the colors as well. There's a lot of tops and tips and it has intarsion and color work. Knit it flat. So it's a big, bold move for me because I've just picked five colors that I thought would look nice with each other, but I've not planned how to play with them and make them look together. So I'm just taking a leap of faith here and hoping it goes well, but that is definitely another one that would probably be a background pattern instead of a pattern that I want to set myself a deadline of starting here and ending there because that's when I get stressed with. Those are my knitting intentions or plans that won't drain my energy and quite on the other hand will fool my knitting mojo. I may move from one to the other, I may ditch some halfway through the winter or in the spring, who knows, but you know, plans are meant to be flexible because this is my craft and my hobby and I really don't want it to be prescriptive at all. If you like some of the patterns that I'm making or if you're making one of them, I would really love to hear. Or if you have any other suggestions, yeah, I am always a fan of listening to other people's fabric choices. So what are you knitting on? Any Anything particularly that is inspiring you this year? As always, thank you very much and I hope you're well. Take care and I'll see you soon.